Hello, I'm Drew Keller, continuing a tutorial series for Pi Presents 1.3. In this tutorial, I'm going to convert a profile from version 1.2 to 1.3 and show how the new validation system helps with that. Now one important thing to note is this tutorial uses the version of Pi Presents that's available on my GitHub page rather than the main Pi Presents GitHub page written by Ken Thompson. So let's go ahead and start it. Um, the manual contains a four-page section about converting profiles. But I'm just going to cover the main things that I've run into in my own project. So you may need to refer to this if you run into some things that I don't mention here. So let's go ahead and open a profile that hasn't been converted yet. Now this prompt here is not available in the main version of PyPresents. So you definitely want to create a backup before opening it in the editor because this is a one-way process. Once you update the profile, you can't open it again in the older version of PyPresents. So let's go ahead and update the profile. And once you op once you update the profile, you'll want to validate it. And there are several different ways of doing that. Uh, the first way, which you can get in the original version of PyPresents, is the validate option under the profile menu, which will run the validation and then open the results in a separate uh, results window. The second way is a new one uh, offered by the status bar. You can click here and it'll run the validation and show you the results on the status bar as a, a series of tallies. Uh, you can also double click there if you want to see the separate window with the report in it. And the third option, which I'll demonstrate now, is the auto validation. Uh, when you turn this on, anytime something is updated on the screen, uh, the validation runs and then and that updates the status bar. So now that we have the auto validation turned on, we can see a number of issues with this profile. The first one with this bright red bar is a critical issue and I actually simulated that by naming a file to, so that the uh, profile couldn't find it. So let's rename that back to what it's supposed to be and then we can rerun the validation by clicking on the status bar and it'll remove that critical status. So next we have an error icon with this triangle so let's take a look at that one. Um, in the editor window it marks various fields that have an issue with the icon next to it and if you put the cursor over that it'll tell you what the problem is. In this case, one shot is not one of the available choices. In version 1.2 it was, but in 1.3 it's not anymore. So for this show I'm going to choose single run. And we can see that that removed the error icon and replaced it with a warning. It also uh, removed it from the tab and we can see there's still some warnings on some of these tabs. So let's take a look at those. Uh, for this text item, there's a warning. And if we put the mouse over it, it tells us that this field depends on the font field. So let's look at that one. That one says Helvetica is not found on the system's font list. Now, Helvetica is the default font uh, in PyPresents but it's not usually a font installed on Linux and not on Raspbian, which is on most Raspberry Pis. Uh, if we replace that one with the, the font that is on Raspberry Pi, it will resolve that warning. Now Liberation Sans was designed to be just like Arial, and Arial was designed to be very similar to Helvetica. 
and Helvetica is actually uh, generally a commercial font which you have to pay for although you might be able to find it for free somewhere and I think the reason why it's in Pipe Presents is because the author creates a lot of presentations for museums where they might want to use the Helvetica font. The fastest way to resolve a lot of these font issues is to select the name of the font, press Control c to copy, and then you can select the font again where you want to replace it and press Control v to paste and then that can go pretty quickly and that resolves all the issues for that show it should okay we still have issues on the individual tracks so let's take a look at those and of course it's the same thing so if I resolve all of these it should clean up the show you can see it cleaning up, cleaning up each track as I go through. You can see this is uh, a lot faster to go through by double clicking on the item to edit it, whereas on the old version you have to click the edit button for everyone. So now we can see that resolved all the issues for that show. So you can see how the icons make it really easy to go through a profile after validating it and then just follow the yellow brick road to correct all of the issues. So now let's take a look at what the report looks like. If we double click on the status bar it'll open up the report and this is a new style of report here that we're looking at. Uh, we have a hierarchical representation of the whole show. At the top we have the profile and if there's any errors with the profile they would appear here. But we, this list here is the main uh, media list which we don't actually see anywhere within the, within the Pi Presents editor, but it's uh, pretty much what's behind the whole uh, behind the scenes thing. And then we have the start show, and then we have each show, which if they're all collapsed, it would look like this. But each show has under it the media list, and then each media list has the individual tracks. So uh, errors and warnings appear with item that is affected and if an item has an error or, or a warning um, the items in the tree above it are opened or expanded so that it's easy to see easy to, to find all of the uh, errors and warnings and you can also see that they're color coded uh, we also still have the original text-based report here which if you want to copy you can uh, copy and paste that and we also have a tally of the types of errors on this window as well here are a few of the conversion issues I've run into in my projects one of the big things is we don't have uh, controls in this box, uh, which means that uh, the keyboard control won't work, or if you have controls set up on the GPIO pins, those won't work. Those won't work for this show either, unless you add them into each individual show. Now, in the old Pi Presents, uh, shows would inherit from parent shows but that doesn't happen anymore and by default if you add a show uh, it will fill in that box with some default controls so the quickest way to fix that for your other ones is to copy that and then paste it back in to each show 
just like that. You know, control C to copy and control V to paste. Um, the second thing is in the keys config file, which we can take a look at. Um, the pp exit command is now pp terminate. And that's what it's talking about right here. Now these other ones uh, are the ones that we just pasted into our show. The pp terminate is kind of an internal one. We don't actually need it explicitly in the show. So pipe presents handles it internally. Another item is if you use shuffling, you need to use the new track count limit. Um, this one uses shuffling, so this track count limit is zero, which will get stuck on this show and never advance to the next show. So we want to set that to one so that we show one random slide and then it will go to the next show. Uh, if you use track plugins, PyPresents 1.3 uses a completely new API, so you would need to rewrite your track plugin. And I actually have several that I rewrote in such a way that they actually work for both 1.2 and 1.3. Uh, the stock version of uh, PyPresents has some kind of a memory leak in the track plugin, so I'm not actually using the plugins at the moment because I haven't actually figured out where that memory leak is coming from. Um, in controls, the show control, the order of the commands is different now. Instead of saying, for example, uh, the name of the show and then start, instead it's open and then the name of the show. And similarly, the name of the show and stop is now close, and then the name of the show. And that is to accommodate the new OSC commands, which uh, use this format. As I mentioned earlier, the manual has a section about converting a profile, so you may need to refer to it for some of the things that I haven't covered here. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.